I just had a vision where the five elements in the cycle of spiritual development, which moves this way, there's a movement that corresponds to that, those five elements, in the five phases, starting from phase five at the lung, and moving around to phase one at the liver, and reverse of that in the healing process. And see how, for example, in phase one, uh, let's say there's, there's mercury to be eliminated, and so the liver needs an acetylcysteine to make glutathione to, to carry the mercury out to the bile. And by doing that, it's removing the mercury from the blood, removing the burden from the kidneys, associated with phase four, uh, sorry, phase two, uh, the fourth stage of, of the spiritual cycle, phase one through five, uh, five through one. Um, so that removes the burden from the kidneys, that's the liver's, liver's main one of his main roles is breaking down toxins, making them more water soluble so they can be excreted through the kidneys and less toxic so they don't damage the kidneys on the way through. Or excreting fat soluble things like mercury through the bile. Um, so the NAC removes the burden of the toxin from, from the kidneys. So now we can move to phase two or repairing cellular enzymes. The work has been being removed now from the intracellular uh, layer and uh, tissue layer. And so then uh, enzymes are restored to function and uh, m state minerals will come in and push the, the enzymes out of the, the uh, heavy metals out. So they go in the extracellular fluid, beginning to re energize. Uh, the inside of the cell primarily at this point. So, so, yeah. So the intracellular toxins are being moved out into the extracellular space. As we progress around, that's going to get pushed into the lymph and, and flush through. For now, things will be pushed out from the intracellular as the energy level comes up in the mitochondria. Enzyme systems restored so that energy can be productive work repairing the inside of the cell as wastes are being pushed out as the water becomes energized inside the cell from the infrared frequencies from the uh, exothermic reactions and oxidative metabolism in the mitochondria. So now testing the kidneys over the years, the thing that has most frequently balanced and there's many things in a lot of homeopathics, but the most frequent non-homeopathic remedy, most frequent remedy, you know, of a specific remedy would be bacterial flora cups or improving digestion, most likely reducing toxicity by competition with aerobes. And, you know, they like the friendly flora like an aerobic, aerobic oxygenated environment in the gut as do our own cells. Get more of the friendly good guys that sweetens the environment. This acid off this acid loving, weak organic acid that creates a healthy, healthy colon. Uh, so, so the kidneys, like friendly flora, which is a remedy for the earth element primarily, but it helps the kidneys to uh, set the stage, clear, clean the blood. And the adrenals are associated with the kidneys. So if the kidneys are working, the adrenals can relax a bit. And having the adrenals relax, the nervous system associated with that is the, the sympathetic branch of the autonomic. So the sympathetic branch that regulates and stimulates the adrenals is relaxing. That's an all or none response. That's systemic. It's whole body, all systems. And that allows the parasympathetic to 
come into balance enough to regulate peristalsis and digestion. Makes sense. Okay, so we're moving into the earth element with the benefit, side benefit of the friendly flora that, that balance the kidney, help balance the kidneys after any C balance the liver. Uh, so now the, the gut. We're moving out the, we're coming from phase two associated with kidney. In phase two is where we see bacterial imbalances. This is where we see, and we're working on the, still the, the mitochondria fully energizing their enzyme systems as well as in the nuclear and, and uh, cytoplasmic enzyme systems. Um, so the, the digestive tract well, electronic measurements in uh, European biological medicine they've found identified the, the biggest electrical stress association that causes heart most heart sy symptoms are uh, from the pancreas birth element phase three phase, phase three where we see fungal drain right birth element fungi you know you have cold, damp conditions, parasite conditions. In phase two, moving to the, just the fungal terrain in phase three, but also regenerative terrain at, in the healing cycle. It's regenerative from one cell, two cells, from two cells, four cells, as long as there's enough electrical current coming from inside the cell to charge the, the water battery in and and then in phase three around the cell, which is now pushing the extracellular fluids, any wastes, any acids, any toxins, denatured proteins, etc. All the junk is going out into the lymph vessel, uh, but simply by this pump mechanism of energizing the water in the body to absorb energy. It absorbs where water doesn't, where bulk water doesn't absorb in ultraviolet or infrared, the structured water of living water, energized water in the body, absorbs in both those areas, especially the near infrared, major peak. And again, the, the frequency is given off by the mitochondria. It's not waste heat, it's energizing water. Like how a reptile would sit on a rock in the sun to energize that water, solarize. Solarized is solar energy. It's it's photonic light energy that was stored temporarily. It's in a biological time scale. It's stored in carbon carbon bonds in the biosphere, but it's light energy. There's only a few species of bacteria, uh, extremophiles. They call them. Live in fumaroles around volcanoes that uh, live on sulfur chemistry. So that would be on geothermal geo. Uh, geophotonic energy because it's still photonic energy any chemical bond it's, it's a bond of what? the electron the field of the electron which is frozen light and then uh, it's it's a Mobius strip of, of light it's a single it's like a take, take a sheet of paper and twist it once just fold it so it's Okay, so we twist it, twist it once, and, and wrap it on itself. So if you start on, if you start on the outside, and move around, now you're on the inside of the same, same strip. So there's only one side. It's, it's so it's, well, here we have a two-dimensional plane that we're, that we're folding, and it's two-dimensional, right? And we have two sides, that two dimensions. There's a duality to it. But if we fold it once and have no longer a two-sided strip, we have a, a one side, it's called a, called a Modi, Mobius strip, Mobius strip. There's only one side. Well, how can you have something with only one side? There it is. And yet it's, it exists in space, it's a spatial form. And that's what a photon is, a light particle when it's in this orbital, it creates an electron. So 
it's those electrons as they in their in their well okay electrons have a little bit of mass so they're localized in that orbital yeah but their fields that's the orbital that's the pathway right that the the body of that angel of that photonic angel is is swimming around that path doing flip each time okay um screaming up for a second sorry about that uh, so so the the Mobius strip is just where the the photon is the the body the electron now the body of that photonic light angel and where the wings are is the field and that goes out to infinity because they have a non-local quality non-local being of the, the what I call the the absolute non-local is the unknowable. It's the source of locality. Right? But locality is specific in time space and the fullness of time space as well as we can only perceive a certain sphere of that. Uh, the Hubble sphere in, in cosmology. So that's just our little bubble. Like if I have a cell in the body, I have a little bubble of that I can see. And a cancer, that's just a severe cancer. It's just me. I don't see the other cells around me. Or to the degree that the cancer is pre or precancerous state is is more severe. There's there's less cellular vision. So you have uh, a, a precancerous state, a, a, a hyperplasia, a metaplasia, dysplasia, you have increasing, increasingly small zones of coherence. It's like, well, this doesn't look like this, the, right? It becomes dark and ugly. There's, oh, dark. The light doesn't get through. Uh, so there's a lack of clarity, lack of communication. That light communication normally takes in, in health along the, the connective tissues. The uh, collagen fibers are a fiber optic that carry light. And where do most of the mi mitochondria live? The laser, they're structured like lasers, they have the interior chambers. Uh, and the lasers that live along those light carriers that are, are also the structural elements that uh, keep the structure from moving apart. It's like a rope cable, but it's like a fiber optic cable. Uh, so it keeps the cell, the intracellular space from expanding beyond a certain point. Right? That's when, when, when there's like the sprain your ankle, connective tissue damage, now it, mm -hmm, they can, it can swell up more, but normally holds it in a certain position, a certain pressure within in the tissues, uh, certain turgid fluid dynamic pressure that's pressing and those ropes, those fibers are holding it from going further apart. Elastin as well, which is elastic, and collagen, which is relatively inelastic. Um, so uh, when that space begins to fill from, from the cell on each side, it's filling that gap and push all the waste out into the lymph, it's, it's because we have the collagen, which is also the fiber optic cable communicating from one cell to another, it's a protein, right? and, and as the water then fills that space, that limited space, it contains these fiber optics, and, and it has the ability to, because of the, the non-localized, or relatively non-delocalized pi electrons in the hexagonal sheets of water, it resonates with these collagen fiber fibers that are traveling through it and with enzymes that may be next to it like in, like uh, uh, enzymes that, that are in the cell membrane uh, they're in contact with the sheets of energized water that has a, a distributed non-local communication function you know of itself and because of that, it also tracks the spirit minerals. 
the, the ornaments to especially the outside of that volume. So you get a, a resonance around the outside that, that is magnetically shielding, absorbs magnetic fields, and, and we need to look at it, see if we can measure that on that scale. Certainly the body doesn't absorb a whole lot of magnetic field. Um, it, it comes through. We need to look at the cranium, the, how much is absorbed there, there may be more, I don't know. Uh, we to fill in some numbers in that. There may be frequency dependent, because uh, there's a whole model of gravity, the, the gravity, and it, it's the best model I've, I've seen, uh, one, of, one of the couple best. The uh, gravity could be extremely low frequency waves. Low, the, below the threshold like, that we have any capacity to test, to measure. Um, they certainly could be there, and we have no way to distinguish them, you know, the more or less we can't measure it. <laughs> I think they've measured down to 500 meter waves or something like that. Um, but beyond that, we don't have a large enough array sensitivity to measure. But the, this would be uh, universal, you know, major energy. It's like this is these are frequencies of the of the uh, the vacuum energy, which I call the plenum, the fullness. The vacuum is empty. When we remove all the the gas from a, a tube, it doesn't mean it's empty. It just means we remove all the gas from it. There's there's whatever is making space time is still in there, and that's the vacuum, and it has. Either, either an infinite or virtually infinite. We can't measure the amount of energy. We can calculate how much, and it's huge. <laughs> but there's, you know, there's, there's, more, there's as, as much in, I forget the size. There's a small space, as much energy in a small space as there is in the Hubble sphere of what we can see in the universe, in matter. And of course, there's the, the modern notions of, of dark energy, dark matter, dark energy being the dominant energetic of the universe, according to these extrapolations, theories, measurements. Um, that makes sense with universal frequencies. I mean, if the frequency, if the wavelength, let's say, was, was half the, you take a fundamental resonance of the Hubble sphere as a as a body, as a cell. It's a, it's a visual cell, we can see it. Uh, that's light, it's one of the quintessence, one of the five players in the, in the game here. Uh, so, if you take a, that fundamental circuit, or a circumferential circuit, or a half wave circuit, and, and you, know, again, you certainly have no way to, to measure that frequency. But we do have ways of, of uh, coming up with a, an amount of energy that uh, has to be, theoretically, has to be present in the, the plenum, the vacuum. That's uh, the equivalent to the, the Planck scale. It's very, very, very small size. Uh, It's it's like it's the non-locality itself. It's the consciousness itself. It's the coherence itself. We live in a coherent universe. Yeah, there's a lot of space between atoms. There's a lot of space between planets. It's mostly space. It's all space. It's all energy, frequency, space, time. Interest of time is not what we think it is. You know, there's the, the whole question of the arrow of time. Well, it's time to come up with a new metaphor because time also travels in reverse. Okay, like we don't have an instrument to measure the frequency of the 
whole universe of gravity, we don't have a way to, as a, as a sentient being in a bio, bio body suit, having this forward time experience, we don't have a direct way to measure backward time on our scale, but we can certainly see it on in many, many other ways. Uh, and we can experience it on this scale. I've received messages from future, future times, both from myself, my future self, and from human, human, human form angels, angels appearing as, as human, in human form, uh, and I was out of body, uh, seizures throughout my life, near death experiences, and, but with veridical information, in one case, the the state and the name of the woman who I would marry, and that was not long, maybe one to two years before I met her uh, in another country from where I was, southern Japan, and so it was in Massachusetts. In the, the other case, 20 years before the World Trade Center towers went down, as far as I can recollect, could have been 20 years to the day. Uh, though that's not important, but it was a very important message at the time. Um, that I was at a point on Long Island where you could only see, of, of Manhattan, where I was going to school from a doctorate, the only thing you could see was the top of the two twin towers over the forest in the bay. It was a bird sanctuary. And she said, when you can't see those from here, remember. That's and to be aware, <laughs> pay attention. And here we are. Um, so, we're talking about the body and who and who. We got to the, to the heart, being fed by, and nourished by the, the earth element. Or, or we had the flora for the earth, earth element that they helped the kidneys by removing the toxins that were coming from the most toxic part of the body, the colon, usually. The other part of the body, besides the kidneys, that is responsible for absorbing water. So that water's toxic, and that's hard on the kidneys. Right? Okay. Put in good bacteria and flora. We live in an anti-life age, an antibiotic age. Anti, you know, to reverse that, and for the physical healing, interesting that the, the the cycle for the psyche, for the spiritual development, is reverse. It's in reverse time compared to the cycle for the body for healing, because one is. Uh, uh, my best guess is that the spirit minerals are antimatter, matter, mix. There's, there's a four-ninths non-locality in the measurable mass to a typical figure that, that can change based on environmental conditions with the interaction with the miser field that it's putting out. Stands many changes, but there are changes that will transcend that that field, and that's the the field that I'm speaking of around the around the cells. Uh, we need a better way to, to to probe. I guess I guess the way to you know the the the, the magnetic field of the heart is the, the strongest magnetic magnetic field in the body. The uh, the brain, we can measure brain waves with the squid quantum interference device. Um, yeah, I have to give more thought to the, the physiology in the, in the, the conscious body. 
the soul, the spirit body, or the spirit body that that uh, carries the, the soul, like the computer carries the information. Uh, yeah, in this case, I think the information is on the order of the, the dark energy of the, you know, gravity and the background uh, plenum vacuum energy. Again, you need to penetrate into that, into the relationships more. But that's what it's looking like. So we get to the heart. Interesting that, for example, that for the gut, the, uh, it's the organic acids, again, like the butyric acid that, that heals the lining of the gut, butyr like butter, the acids in butter, uh, very important. And the acids that feed the lining of the colon also feed the heart. And we mentioned about the, the pancreas having an electrical relationship of damaging the heart. The pancreas is the most sensitive organ, more so than the adrenal. Super sensitive to any kind of stress and stimulants, caffeine, uh, refined sugar. And going back from the so we're at phase three in the digestive to phase four in the heart. Interesting, in Vincent's uh, original work, the communities where he saw high rates of death from the heart were phase four water, mineral waters, high energy waters, high electrons and high protons. Um, so they saw more heart attacks in those, in those villages. Uh, so phase four, cleansing, heart attack training, allergy training, life energy training, allergy means life energy, or like energy. You think of allergies, it's the energy and allergy, urgy means energy. The energy isn't in the pollen, it's not in the dander, it's not in the, the parsley, digestive food that got absorbed through the gut. Energy is the immune response, just like in a fever in phase phase two, or a low fever in phase one, viral fever, bacterial fever, higher phase two. Uh, the energy is the body's response. It increases the production of infrared light that is absorbed by the body's water. It penetrates about nine inches through the body, so pretty much go from side to side. So if, even if you have a, a localized calor fever, temperature, increase in thermal energy, uh, the, the classic calor, dolor, ruber, ruber is redness, dolor, pain, calor, heat. Oh. The heat is functional. It re-energizes the water. And you can re-energize it a little bit because you're in a low energy terrain because the, the, the that the uh, mitochondria aren't functioning efficiently, that they're down partially or fully in phase one terrain. But you can generate a fever that's, you know, it's 101 or whatever, and it's enough to keep the energy of the, the living water up a bit. It was Albert St. Georgi, Nobel Prize winner, uh, who said, life is water dancing to the tune of solids. It's one of those solids, the collagen we talked about that connects one cell to another. The proteins, the structural proteins like collagen, the enzymes, functional proteins. Solids. The flexible solids. 
we have a three-dimensional shape called conformation. That conformation changes according to the terrain, the energy of the water. If are in toxic water, we'll shoot. You know, the, the mercury just took the place of the zinc that was the active cofactor in that enzyme. That enzyme is down. It's blocked. It's got a heavy metal in it. And, and the metalloenzymes are a key, uh, key toxin location that is reversed with things like hormus minerals, the spirit minerals, will go in and take that spot and then you know, act like a zinc. Uh, mostly the, the spirit minerals, well, all the minerals are spirit minerals, and the few of them in the normal form, that is what we can measure and you know, what, what science knows about. Science, modern science has, has so much knowledge that it can now estimate how much knowledge it has. And that's, it knows something about 4% of what is. And it knows nothing about 96%. But 96% is spirit. It's the living universe. It's the bulk of, of life, of this life. We drop away, like, like a chrysalis drops away from a butterfly. We drop this vessel and can regenerate it. Just like in, in, in vitro studies, in glass, that means in a test tube, irradiating DNA with cross, cross uh, coherent light. The coherence is essential. We have two beams of coherence. No, we have one beam of coherence is the gravitational background planet, the fullness, the, the ether. I don't know what we're getting for it. Um, ether's never been proved to, to not exist. In fact, science can't prove anything that doesn't exist. You can't prove. Science doesn't prove. It observes, measures, and scientists hypothesize, theorize. And you know what? If, if we are operating our thinking on a single hypothesis, it's, well, it's, it's dead science. It's not growing. It's not learning. It's not navigating. It's just barreling forward on whatever it's doing. We need at least two good hypotheses that are you know, possible, plausible, measurable. Uh, something is measurable that would be different between the two. We've been operating on a single hypothesis mindset for a while, for a century. And so there's a, what we call conventional thinking, whether it's in medicine, whether it's in physics, whether it's in chemistry, whether it's in psychology, whether it's in spirituality. So there's this sort of linear one track, like we think about time. It's the arrow of time, arrow of time. Well, which way does an arrow go in a vortex? And then, and then, and then, the first answer is, well, it goes in a circle around the vortex. It's, it's an arrow of time, but it repeats itself in cycles. But not the same cycle, but there's a, there's a pattern in cycles. And are there patterns of cycles in, in time? How about the galaxy? How about the year? How about the day? How about everything has its cycles? To everything there is a time, a season. And... Um, we're in one of those changing seasons now. We've, we've been through the, the end points of the Egyptian calendar three days after I put up my first web, website on the, on the 8th of September, 2001. Uh, Sorry, I, I put up my website on the, the, the day of the end of the Egyptian calendar, which was three days before 9-11. Didn't know it at the time, found out later. Uh, hmm. Looking into numbers and time around the 9-11. I just put my website before that. Huh, that's the day the, I, I finally got it up that evening. 
<laughs> that was the day the Egyptian calendar ended. And then I got my first few books. The, the, the Shire book actually wound up going up like I don't know, a day, two days. I think within two days of, of uh, the end of the, the uh, Mayan calendar, at least hypothesized. Yeah. And I had that vision 20 years before my moon when I was in, in optometry school. And, uh, this most beautiful, elegant, stylish New York woman. Uh, but in retrospect, more angelic than than human. Nothing, no, no characteristics that would give away uh, the level of imperfection, of unique, unique imperfection that we see in humanity, which is also our strength. As, as human beings, we get to, through these experiences of challenge and meeting those challenges, stimulating our genetic potential, our spiritual potential for navigation, for growth, expansion, for increased transcendence relationship with other, the self, bridging, like two cells, getting to a level of energy where they're now joined by complete resonance of uh, an exterior water structure field that carries no locality, that emphasizes, that draws, that, that becomes a sanctuary for the non-local, for the spirit the con minerals of consciousness, bringing consciousness to the tissue, which is another huge point for, for your healing, that by attending, by not killing the messenger, we talk Kala, Ruber, Dola, Dola, pain, by not killing the pain, but by feeling, by being with it, by expanding our consciousness, not drawing away from the pain, but expanding our consciousness to include the pain. And the pain, instead of being what we're shrinking from, outside us, greater, bigger than us, once the pain is within us and smaller than us, even if it's still the same pain, it's not the same pain in a different context. Meaning is contextual. So the meaning of pain is different. It's very different to suffer. Suffering a human crisis when the kidneys are the kidneys are tightly wrapped in connective tissue. They can't expand without shutting down. So there's a fine line there. Can't go more than a day without the kidneys working. That's around dialysis. So. By bringing consciousness in, we actually are directing the physical minerals, the, the, the dozen or so uh, transition minerals in a non-metallic state, in a superconducting state, in a superfluid state, in a state that is the vessel, the rail for consciousness. The rail for these minerals is non-locality. They're halfway there. They like, they like a portal into non-locality because that's who they are. They're the king of the portal. So when you have ring shapes, ring shape structures in organic compounds, especially with double bonds, conjugate double bonds, uh, uh, benzene rings, hex, hex, hexane, hexane rings, uh, those pi electrons create an, uh, a locally non delocalized zone of electron juice. You know, it's like the, there's more of the, that non locality shared field where it's not one electron here and one here. It's a it's a pool. It's it's an electron. Electrons have an Ah, a chill party. It's the chill zone. And, and and so that chill zone is a wonderful fairy cage. It blocks 
electrical fields quite well. And that is what the spirit loves, is that little sanctuary. And same with the same structure of hexagonal water, where there's delocalized uh, electrons and, and serve that same ring function of, of a electrical shield. Now that the, the M state mineral of conscious the spirit mineral itself has has a function of uh, a, a, uh, a field that that resists magnetic fields in, in a similar way. It, 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 whatever magnetic field it pinges on its surface, and this could be a could be uh, a, crystal, a crystal lattice structure, which tends to be a sheet-like structure in the water. Uh, of of minerals, con min minerals that hold the consciousness, uh, they too become delocalized. So it's not just one here and 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 one here. It's like all those localities are part of a you know, a, a matrix, its own matrix, a field of of the spirit body of the, the ghost. Like the Holy Ghost, the ghost, the, the vessel of consciousness. Not the awareness that it has, the experiences, not the function, but the structure. The structure is these superconductive, superfluid minerals that have the qualities of the spirit, as we understand it, of subtlety, of non locality, bilocation, etc. That is, is well documented. And we can throw out that data if we want to separate church and state and and science and, and, and thinking about all the observations. If we throw out the data that doesn't fit our model, we have a conventional model, we're throwing out 96% of what makes up the world according to the conventional model. If we take in the unusual things that we see in the spiritual world, and see how that mirrors. It's not the same. Nope, they're different. It's not the same, but it mirrors the material, spiritual material, the mirrors. Where is the real life? Well, the immortal life is in... <laughs> I'm in a mirror. I have a mirror image in front of me on the screen. So, when I move this from now, I move. That's pretty cool. So, we have the... The bio body suit, right? the, the carbon copy, I call it. One of the fun names that we can regenerate from the image that's held in, in, the, in the, the glass study that I began to tell you about. The two cross beams of coherence, like the one beam of the source. And this other cross beam, when we become it, when we become coherent in our our higher self, our consciousness, our spirit, our soul, when which is, depends on a coherent body to fully produce, to fully manifest, um, but we develop the capacity to seek and develop coherence through challenge, through lack of coherence, through damage and destructive forces. So the glass takes on an image, a hologram. We have a holographic universe, there's an example. The hologram in that glass. Now, with the DNA taken away, but the components of DNA put in place and, and cross laser beams to regenerate the image, which regenerates the photonic field, the light field in that space, has been shown to regenerate the same DNA, same sequence. So your light body, you're carried by the spirit body, the light body of consciousness, carried by your spirit body of these minerals of love that can inhabit the carbon copy body, that, that can energize this water body that creates the sanctuary for the spirit. 
a symbiosis, like the symbiosis of the mitochondria, the bacteria, with our cells. You need those little lasers in there to release the sunlight in just the right way. And in just the right direction to communicate from one cell to another. You know that co coherent light, Fritz Pop's work, coherent light is released by cells, especially when they're changing, when they're developing, or when they're degenerating. And even more so when the spirit passes out of the cell, there's the biggest release of coherent light. Hmm. Well, where does it go? Well, it goes from photon to field. It goes from local to non-local. Non local is the consciousness. So it's, it's not lost on the, the source consciousness, the, 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 the dark energy that's really the energy that's the most light, the source of light. It's filled with light. That's why it's got so much energy in that space. This space has the energy of all the matter in the universe. Well, because it's non local. It's, it is in all the universe. It's coherent. That's why there's such coordination. I was talking about how the, the time reversal in the spirit, the, 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 the Egyptians uh, have a sense of this in their, in their understandings, that if I stand here and I look in front of me, I see. And what's behind me, where I came from, I don't see. And I stand here in time and I look and I see, clearly I see the past. I have the photonic images of the past that I can call forth in my mind. And what I don't see, that can see in my mind's eye, I can imagine that lies behind me, where I come from, is the future. So my authentic full self is from the future. My ego is certainly from the past and has all these images and that's what I can control and that's all that science can control in its conventional scope. But to control how and where we wind up after this, we need to look beyond that small circle of 4% material, materialism. If we limit our scope to material, what is material, well, we have, we have the, the nucleus of the atom, and then we have the electron because it has a little bit of mass. It's not very material, so we don't really know it very well or work with it so much at the beginning to, right? Electroacupuncture, uh, measuring the impedance of the meridians, and, and what I've been engaged in most deeply for the last 30 years has been the fascination with, with what it takes to produce coherence, coherent state in all those vessels, in all those electrical channels. And, and my conclusion is that we're communicating through the, the light content of those electrical connections uh, and communicating that non-locally with, with people all around the planet. How do we do that? Well, I can't measure electronically, but I can observe because the, the consciousness is the perfect observation system, much better than the instrument, exteriorized instrument, and, uh, laboratory fractal of a function that's inherent in, in existence itself. And a magnesium atom sure has a good memory. It doesn't wake up and it's, forgets how to be magnesium. It's got Alzheimer's magnesium disease or you know, turned into calcium. Not that it can't turn into something else. That's a process that uh, happens a lot differently than in the conventional model, in my thinking. Uh, there's caravans, compilations, and 
studies his, his book in the 1960s, professor, European professor, uh, who shows how, for example, calcium and magnesium do change in each other under certain conditions, in the biological system at least. And there's, um, there's certainly, you know, if a biological system can produce the, a certain energetic state of, of energy concentration and frequency, when a co in the cosmos, you certainly have that potential uh, in, in the, the Birkeland current of the galactic and galactic cluster that connects uh, and, and creates the, the, the shielded zones that, that, that draws the the, uh, mineral, the consciousness minerals the dark the dark matter uh, the that that holds the the dark energy states the, the 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 cellular cellularity on the largest scale of the cosmos is a direct fractal of the, the brain of, it looks it's structured like neurons on its scale. And we know that the plasmas are scalable in function. The, the plasma cosmologists have shown in the laboratory how plasmas move just like galaxies, only in their time scale, which is, because they're small, is very fast. And we can observe them in a fraction of a very small fraction of a second, do what a galaxy does in billions of years. But it does it has the same behavior. That's why plasmas are called plasmas both in biology and in physics and astrophysics, because they have the same behavior. They're electrical conductors, and therefore they behave the same because they carry electromagnetic forces in a moving medium, gas, liquid. So they have same characteristic functions of, of twisted pairs of vessels like the artery and the vein. They carry the blood plasma. Again, that was named first. The plasma in the sky that was seen in, in, in the aurora borealis, the cosmic plasma gets its name, moved like light, living blood vessels. In pairs, it, it has the same function, different scale, different time scale spatial scale, but the same function. And those functions, again, are scalable in space-time. So we're a microcosm. We're a fractal. Yeah. The universe is cellular. We're cellular. Each one of us is a cell in consciousness, in the dark energy. It's a cell of consciousness in the infinite. And because it's a non-local function, we're connected, <laughs> like the cells in our body. They're remote, but they're connected by non-locality through the nature of energized water, through the nature of the spirit minerals that are drawn to that sanctuary of energized water. And, and I love that between the two of them, they can shield electrical and magnetic. It's, it's a wonderful functional pairing, isn't it? It's not a random, random act of, of, of uh, a magic explosion. I don't think so. I think a better visualization is this cell that we can see, this visual cell of the, the uh, Hubble sphere. Picture it as just like, like the galactic uh, galactic clusters become like part of the cell membrane of one one huge cell of non-local dark energy. This is the part that grows. This is the part that expands. That gets more and more energy. Where does that come from? From its nature. It's the source. So, <laughs> and because it's electronic, like the electronic the, the electron-rich water, energized water in our body, has a negative charge. It's, higher, it's highly enriched in electrons. It literally moves the protons out, just like the, the 
the dark energy cells move out the protonic matter, the, the, the dense matter, the, that's, in this case it's, it's going to be, it's going to start in this model as, as a dark matter, which is again half, it's part, part uh, antimatter, part matter, hence the decrease in, in, in the mass that we observe. It's a half. It's if it's five ninths of the mass that we're observing, then it only takes two ninths, two out of nine particles. And because they're in a in a lattice relationship, not not a soup like this being is is the conventional model, but in a lattice model like uh, physicist in Chicago. I forget his name, but uh, he worked on the Manhattan Project. So he's, he's high level physicist. His model of the nucleus is is uh, a structural one. It's beautiful. It's still that beautiful, like everything else. Uh, in its fullness, it's still that beautiful. So it's on the same resonance, of course, the fractal, like the electron orbitals. A fractal decahedral when you get up to the same level of, of size, which is the, the resonance of the perfect size, which is, uh, I think, is palladium. So the palladium group, uh, and palladium, interestingly, is on in homeopathy, on, so in terms of symptoms that it produces in tiny, energized amounts of communication of its frequency, information in, in the human uh, human experience is the deepest acting in homeopathy. But that's palladium in, in metallic form, in the, in the conventional form, in the 4% that we know about. Uh, no, there's a 20% or something, it's about 20-ish 20, 20 percent. It's, it's dark matter. It's in this form of, oh, it's, it's is it, uh, the, the, the protons and, and neutrons, the nuclear matter. So this nuclear matter that's getting pushed out of the of the dark energy expansion is these fields that surround the galaxies. This big field of of mass. Where's that mass? What is it? It's dark matter. It's it's spirit matter. It's it's the consciousness holding vessel of the cellular of the material form. Of the the galaxies. The, the dominant of that. And what are they? They're, they're the the Z pinches of current. They're where the we see, we see these jets of current. These are charge charge carrying particles, the proton and electron. So have uh, where the current focalizes at the at the at the membrane, which the membrane would be where you have the, the gaseous condensate of the of the spirit minerals that warms the orms David Hudson's patented orms uh, O R M E S capital O R M um, the white powder gold the the philosopher's stone the the noose of Egypt uh, the the chain of oriental medicine uh, so. So that's now a superconductor at the edge of this field that's growing because it, it, it's growing means it's increasing its energy, which means it's also increasing its highest frequency. Interesting. So Again, this is cellular, but non-local in function. So all of the cells throughout the cosmos and beyond the Hubble sphere that we can see are all one, are all resonating, communicating one consciousness, unity consciousness. And uh, so if this cell, the Hubble sphere, if we can chunk it down to a cell, it's, I see it as a cell that's coming in, through the, the, the growth appears to be 
in, in coming from the, the vortex, moving out in growth, and we have a, a complete cycle, never leaving the resonance of consciousness, but changing its its form, its nature, uh, in terms of. We know that there's 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 a pretty within I forget five or so orders of magnitude I think it is of the five quintet, quintessential elements. Even though the amount of energy is very different, there's a lot of energy in let's say there's a lot of energy in the uh, uh, the dark energy, and then there's and then there's figure where my hands are here and there's there's most of the rest of the energy is in dark matter and then there's that little tiny bit that's the conventional that we have our, our conventional models you know to 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 think okay we have it figured out right we know what's happening but we don't know what's happening with all this but yet in those five we got the the protons and neutrons are one of the five the electrons are another one of the five, and the, then we have the photon energy, electromagnetic energy. Is, that's three. That's only like a tiny bit of, of the energy, but three equal parts in a linear measure. So they have the same length. That means they're 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 in a, a circular relationship. They're in a double circle because there's there's the control cycle and the stimulatory cycle with the material material bits going in the fo er, forward arrow of time. Well, we know that light, the, the third of those, that's, it's, it's the crossover element, right? It, it's, it, it, the light photons clearly go forward and backward in, in t their temporal effects. You, you can't distinguish time based on the behavior of a photon. When, when you have conditions where, where an electromagnetic field focalizes into a photon, when, when the non-local form, form forms, comes together to form a wormhole, and that you know, those non-local, uh, non-local resonance, consciousness of the wings of the light angel, be in form in, in space in locality. We have photon, and it forms photon forward and backward in time according to the contingencies of the space-time. It's it's not particular forward reverse. The big thing that's particular for and reverse in, in more so matter is the, 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 the cosmologists say, well, where's all the, where's all the antimatter? Because we see that we can see in our own research, our own eyes, we can visualize that, that every electron like, comes into existence paired with a, with a, prot with a uh, electron with a positron, and they go out of existence as a pair. There's a beating of two wings. There's a symmetry. And and yet there's all this missing antimatter. Where is it? It's in the spirit. And in the case of the electron, it's electron hat is material, flow flies. So the, their functions in the spirit are much less localized. But yet some are localized. So the electron uh, in the spirit carries the, the 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 light of consciousness, the the energy of emotion, uh, and the the protons. Again, now now if if there are two, the so ones that. Are, are here in this realm on Earth that form the spirit body are two ninths antimatter. Explains the weight, the mass. Um, it certainly doesn't explain everything about the nature of that. We need to look at the lattice structure that, that the, the 
physics professor from the Manhattan Project came up with. Um, that works beautifully to explain some things in periodicity and, and, and whatnot in the, in the uh, periodic table. Um, and totally fits with the, the, the quintessence resonance, the dodecahedral resonance in, in space uh, that we see on every, every level.